Good morning, citizens of the universe. Hi, hello, my name is EJ, and I am back again with another narrated art time lapse video for us to take a look at and, you know, hopefully learn a thing or two from. Of course, this is the reason why I do it, you know. I wash my old uh, artwork process and kind of just talk about it because who knows, maybe one of you guys might learn a thing or two from the way I do my artwork and whatnot. And aside from that, it's always just fun to take a look at something that I've done previously, so yeah. But today, we are taking a look at an illustration called Vampire Slayer. Um, I guess I could talk real quick about where my ideas came from. Um, it, it's really odd that I don't <laughs> remember exactly what the genesis of this particular illustration from. Typically, I... I do prompts, right? I always scour the internet for prompts. They're great. They're fun. They're always a good way to get my day started. Um, I use them for warm up typically, and uh, typically I go through different groups. Um, I'm part of like Schedule.net, which they do prompts. Uh, create a group. Um, before they had the creator website, the creator group on Facebook posts uh, weekly prompts as well. And also daily spit paint, which um, I'm a very active member of. They post daily prompts all the time. So um, the interesting thing about this particular illustration is that clearly in my file title and <laughs> my file name, which is on top of the creator title bar, it says K group, which means that the creator group in Facebook was the one who posted this prompt. But for the life of me, I could not remember what the exact name of the prompt was. Was it Vampire Slayer or was it something else? I'm not sure. I don't even remember. I don't even remember what that original prompt was, which is kind of funny because, yeah, this is a while back anyway. So. I'm doing my recording of this particular uh, commentary in the summer of 2021 and clearly um, in the file name of my artwork or in, in the file name, in my file name of my particular illustration, I always um, put the date in and where the prompt came from. In, my, in this case, it says on there that I did this way back in March of 2020. So this is more than a year ago since I've created it so forgive me if I totally forgot exactly what the prompt was from that creator group but anyways what I do remember though is my thought processes when right before I created this particular piece um because it was like a week of me thinking back and forth on what I'm going to do for this particular illustration um because I, I knew I was inspired by a prompt, but whatever that prompt was, for the life of me, I could not remember it. Um, but I do remember for that particular week, um, while I was like, you know, ruminating and thinking about what I was going to do for uh, that particular creative group prompt, I was hanging out with my workmate, Betty. And Betty has a tendency to listen to crime shows when we're working. So I was heavily influenced by her when when I was like trying to figure out what to do for an illustration. And so finally, when the weekend rolled around and I finally got the time to, you know, do this particular illustration, I finally just ended up looking up references for crime scenes just because Betty was just listening to a bunch of crime shows and so that's pretty much just what ended up happening um clearly you know the prompt has something to do with vampires whether it was a vampire slayer was the exact prompt or if it was just vampire theme prompt I don't remember but I do know that in my head I ended up wanting to do a vampire slayer of some sort and not only did I want to do a vampire slayer but I really wanted like a mishmash of eras time eras um so in this particular case um 
clearly this is not the modern time just judging from the vehicle design and from the fashion design it's clearly two totally different eras so the vehicle design is uh, from the 70s that that boxy looking huge car boxy type cars vehicles those were very popular in the 60s and 70s i think really more 70s late early 80s late 70s early 80s um so that particular style of vehicle was very popular then and but like the particular fashion of the policemen though are from the 20s especially like the hat like i remember when i was doing research for this particular illustration i i kept finding photos from the 1920s um like early crime scenes um the f camera i think wasn't used for crime scenes until right around that time maybe 1920s 1910 maybe even a little earlier but definitely not before 1900s right um and so from this early crime photographs that I've been seeing, like a lot of the fashion I was seeing was from the 1910, 1920s, you know. And uh, yeah, the policeman outfit was just really, really different back then. Um, it's interesting that I'm talking about fashion right now because I'm drawing this guy out and um, like, look, <laughs> I was about to talk about the hat and I just did the hat. Um, when I first catched him out, he had, you know, the generic police hat that we have nowadays. But then um, I decided to change it the last minute because I was heavily inspired by some of the photographs that I was looking up for reference. And so I ended up making it like this big, tall, uh, almost like a top hat, but not quite. Um, so, yeah, um, that particular photographer on the right, right there his particular style his particular uh fashion is definitely from the 1920s that's definitely a 1920s um police fashion right there so yeah and then of course the camera that he's holding is definitely an old old school um photograph so yeah um but yeah that's really where uh, the inspiration came from was from 1920s crime photographs i was looking at so many of them <laughs> before i did this it's not even funny um it was kind of morbid <laughs> but it was a good source of you know inspiration so i was i was glad that i look up references for this one so yeah but anyways, let's talk about the process. Um, so uh, I just got done sketching. Uh, it That took a while. Uh, I spent a good amount of time sketching, which is fine. You know, good, nice sketch it always helps with the illustration. So obviously I took some time doing that. Um, and then as soon as I did the sketch, I, you know, I'm doing my quick coloring scheme. Um, Typically when I color, uh, well nowadays when I color, I typically limit my palette. Uh, this was way before I changed my working method. Um, you can clearly see that I have quite a lot of colors in, well really I just have the full color wheel at my disposal and I'm kind of just moving things around um, and whatnot. And really I don't know what particular color scheme I had in mind when I was doing this honestly. Um, cause I'm like watching all my color choices right now and they're like all over the place. But I have a feeling that I was heavily, heavily influenced by sepia tone simply just because I was looking at old photographs and fo old photographs are either black and white or sepia. And I guess I was heavily influenced by sepia tone. So I guess a lot of my color choices are very heavily influenced by it. And I mean, you could tell from the illustration anyways, it's predominantly brownish and reddish and whatnot. So yeah, um, aside from the green and the very rich blue that I use for the blood, which I really wanted the blue there. Like I remember thinking that consciously because I knew that I wanted to differentiate um, the focal point, which really the focal point is obviously the vampires, right? The dead vampires. Um, so since I wanted them to be the focal point, I wanted something to draw the viewer's eyes into them. And of course, I decided that I was just going to use blue blood. 
uh, since the whole scene is predominantly warm anyways with all those oranges and reddish uh, um, desaturated reds and browns I figured you know might as well go with blue and the blue really does stand out I mean you could clearly see it's a very vivid blue which is nice it does provide a nice contrast so but anyway so I laid down my colors um, says uh, some of the brushes I use have a hue variation in it and I use the random mech brush a lot uh, just to give me you know different shapes and whatnot and then uh, I did some color dodge edits, I did some multiply edits on different layers and whatnot. They were all on like four or five different layers. And then as soon as I'm kind of happy with the overall color scheme, I merged them all into one layer. And then I would start smudging things around just so that I could have some form of blending going on. And then when I do my smudging though, I... I definitely make sure that you know I preserve the general shape of the objects in the scene um, because really my whole aim in this whole smudging thing is to get a base paint that I could start my detailing process on and so yeah I'm just smudging things around until recognizable shapes and then finally as soon as I'm done smudging I'll start my detailing which my detailing is a three-step process that I do through parts of my illustration. Um, I basically the three-step process is I delineate my edges, which means I make my edges sharper so that my objects read clearer. I accentuate the shadows, which means I try to darken the shadows a little bit if it needs darkening, and then of course I add highlights. So. And I do that through sections and parts of the illustration, which you'll see me do um, in the next few minutes. For now, but for now, just enjoying watching the show, me smudging and whatnot, so I could get my base paint.
So I've actually started detailing quite a ways back, um, but I was enjoying watching the show so much that I kind of forgot to talk. Um, but when the whole smudging process was done, I obviously started the detailing process and I always start out in the background. So after I was done smudging, that was like my... Um, the very first thing that I did was the background, which is obviously the wooded area. Uh, at the very, very back, uh, I used uh, the generic uh, texture brush. It was a generic like uh, leaf texture brush. You could find it under the texture section in the generic brushes that comes along with Krita 4. So I picked that and I, you know, kind of added some details to the trees just to make them look like they're trees um, and it was a real quick uh, draw just simply because um, I was looking at a photo reference when I was painting that background um, I, I guess real quick I guess I could talk real quick about some of my inspirations um, photograph wise um, there's a bunch of photographs that I was referencing again like I mentioned they were all like crime scenes but there was this one particular uh, photograph from the son of Sam um, crime way back in late 70s I think it was in the late 70s it was in New York uh, and son of sam was the serial killer that was like running rampant in new york at that point in time and there was this one particular photo that a photographer took of a bunch of investigators and i guess the crime scene was right next to a park or maybe it was right next to central park i mean i'm not sure i don't remember what the details of the scene was or what the details of the photograph was but um, basically the whole photograph was kind of laid out very very similar to that particular photograph where um, there was uh, some form of wooded area slash park area in the back and so it was really easy for me to figure out how the shadows was going to fall and how the light was going to fall on the trees simply because I was looking at that photograph so um, I really like that background <laughs> it was one of the few things that I like about this particular illustration was that particular background it just because it was easily done and it just i don't know it just feels like a good nice anchor because you know everything else is warm and brown obviously except for the blue blood that we see we're looking at right now and i guess i'm about to detail one of the vampires but yeah going back to the tree background um it's green unlike you know any of the warm colors green is obviously a cool color so i guess it kind of provides a nice contrast to everything else so yeah as well as the blue blood that we're looking at right now um but yeah so i started with the back and then obviously i lassoed some of the characters in the foreground because i was going to work on the ground and i didn't want them to be affected when i was working on the ground so i you know grabbed the lasso tool and kind of sectioned them off while i was working on detailing the background um so i detailed obviously like the the sidewalk which really wasn't there before uh, and i detailed the building on the left which honestly i feel like the building on the left is the weakest part of the illustration i don't know why i just i could not get into that building at all that's probably one of the things i don't like about this illustration um so yeah uh composition wise i guess i'm gonna have to change some things around about this composition to make it far more interesting uh, but that building feels very, very lacking. And I think part of the reason why I feel that building is just lacking is because if there's some form of crime scene in front of you, you know, I feel like you'd want to go look, right? Because there's always onlookers in any kind of crime scene or any kind of accident where the cops are involved and there's plenty of cop cars. There's always people like milling out and about wondering what's going on. You know and like that building on the left looks so empty <laughs> so 
I I feel like there should be people like looking out the windows, like going, "What's going on? Oh wow, what what's that animal? Oh, I'm freaked out or something." I don't know. I feel like it's too empty personally, but yeah, that's just me kind of thinking about this thing now, a year later after I did this illustration. So, <laughs> but anyways, going back to the process. So yeah, I lassoed off all the characters. Um, just so that I won't affect them and then kind of work on the background detail them some more um, I'm clearly working on the foreground characters right now which the foreground characters are done very very quickly um, I mean you can see that I didn't really spend a whole lot of time on them I really like the photographer dude too oh man the photographer guy there's quite a lot of things I like about this illustration the background the, the vehicles um, the 70s style vehicles and their fashion and actually all the characters uh, the photographer and the three characters in the back is actually pretty cool too the vampires I feel like could could use a lot more work I will admit that I do like the design of the ears though because I was looking at a bat when I was drawing um, the vampires and bats have very big ears right and so uh, when I decided to add very big ears in that vampire, I thought that was very cool. So that was a cool design. But as for the vampire himself, itself, eh, it's alright. And like the blue blood, like I really like the color of the blue, but I don't really like the way I rendered it. So I, I personally feel that blue blood could have looked more bloodish, kind of, like more messier looking rather than looking like a Kool-Aid that got spilled because that's what it looks like. It looks like, you know, oh, I spilled my Kool-Aid. I'm sad. That's what it looks like. It doesn't look like some brutal blood scene or whatnot. So, but I digress. So, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, so, obviously, I'm just detailing the characters. I finished detailing uh, the cop and then, obviously, I finished detailing the foreground vampire now I'm working on uh, the cop cars and again my three-step process I delineate my edges I situate my shadows if they need darkening and then add some highlights so you can see at the very beginning when I started detailing that cop car I was using highlights as a way for me to kind of delineate my edges and kind of make the shape read better uh, as you can see and then obviously I'm gonna jump oh I thought I was gonna start in the second car but obviously I'm gonna start in the second vampire so but yeah same step process over and over again and then the very last thing that I did is obviously the three figures in the back um, so obviously my inspiration of vampire slayers uh, really my the, the thing that was running through my head when I decided that the Vampire Slayer was going to be girl, the, the real idea in my head was um, this 1998-96 uh, movie. It was an anime from Japan called Blood. It's such an awesome, awesome anime. It's like an hour long. And of course, Vampire Slayer was the theme of that one. And... Um, so yeah, that was kind of like the impetus in my head. But I totally forgot that America has their own female vampire slayer, which was Buffy from the 90s. I totally forgot that, you know, Buffy was around. Um, I could have used her for inspiration too, but I, I don't really know much about Buffy though because I didn't really watch the show. So yeah. But anyway, so I, I decided it was going to be, you know, a little girl, which is a vampire slayer. She's a superhero of some sort or whatnot. Really, I got the idea from Blood because in the movie Blood, it was a high school girl that was a vampire slayer. Um, so, yeah. Um, once I started detailing the characters, what I did was like I did a real quick sketch to kind of help me figure out what their poses were. And as soon as I have that quick sketch, it was just pretty simple um, detailing it. Because the whole, I mean, the characters are backlit at that point. You can't really see a whole lot of anything else because they're pretty much in shadow. So 
really I just added like a few highlights to kind of denote where the edges of the characters are and then yeah and that's pretty much how I ended up just um, detailing them um, so the little girl is your standard you know girl in the school girl outfit I guess and then right next to her is like a guardian which is kind of a boring dude character really but the one I like the most out of those three figures, aside from the girl, because I thought my sketch of the girl was pretty cool. But the figure that I like the most on those three figures behind is the fat guy that I drew. He's your classic 1920s cop. If you look up 1920s cop, um, like photographs of 1920s cop, you'll you'll see a lot of them are fat. I'm so sorry. I'm <laughs> like picking on them. But yeah, a lot of them were kind of fat, uh, and they definitely were wearing that really huge top hat looking police hat, which was, I thought was really interesting. But I really like the feel of that character though, the way I drew him, because he kind of if he has this Papa Bear feel of some sort, so yeah. But yeah, here's my sketch of the girl. I, I really think my sketch of the girl was really cool. I, I had a hard time trying to figure out her pose. Uh, like I wanted her to be relaxed and whatnot. I wanted to give her a sword obviously as her weapon but honestly since she is so far back into the scene like it's so hard to tell that she has some form of sword so really I could have totally discarded the sword and it would not have affected the illustration at all honestly but yeah I like her her pose uh, I thought her pose was cool. And then, of course, her guardian guy, dude, whatever his name is. I, I wanted him to look like business-like and official, but you can't really see the fact that he's wearing a suit because he's backlit, you know? So, he, he was kind of meh, in all honesty. And then, of course, he's my favorite guy. Oh, dude, the way I drew him is just so cool. I really like this dude. I really like him. He has a lot of character. Yo, what's up, Papa Bear? Look at you. But yeah, I mean, the whole three characters, they're all just pretty much backlit. And yeah, I think I used the lasso tool to isolate. I didn't use the lasso tool. I thought I totally used the lasso tool to isolate them, but I guess not. So yeah. But yeah, the crazy thing about all this is that all the details are going to be gone since they're all backlit and you could barely tell all the details about them. So yeah. Once I do the multiply, uh, a lot of these details are just going to disappear. But I'm really curious as to what I did with the background though. And there goes the highlight to kind of denote where the edges are. So yeah. And then what did I do with the background? I know I'm trying to remember what I did with the background. Huh, I just painted behind them. All right, so that's what I did. And I realized I did that. That was pretty cool. The cop, the my favorite Papa Bear dude needs some little darkening. I'm like giving my, <laughs> my own self a critique. Yo, buddy, fix his leg because his leg is too light. Did I fix that? I don't remember if I fixed that. But I clearly fixed the height because I was having some height issues there. But yeah, anyways, this illustration is almost done. I mean, I pretty much just putting my final touches in the characters right so yeah but yeah I really dig this illustration uh, I'm really glad for my 1920s crime scene inspiration to come up with this really really cool illustration that for critic group I think <laughs> seriously don't remember who I was doing this illustration for but yeah Either way, we still got a cool illustration to watch and take a look at. So, yeah. But, yeah. 
I'm doing my final smudging, just kind of blend some more colors in and then I'll just go back, sharpen things up a bit with some color dodge or maybe just normal light. I don't remember what I use. Yeah, sharpening that sword. I remember adding some blue on there too. Yeah, you just can't tell the sword, man. It's just so far back there. So yeah. Okay, I just use a generic yellow just to add the highlights. I thought I did color dodge, so yeah. And there goes Papa Bear. Yo, what's up, Papa Bear? So yeah. But yep, I think that's the end of it. Alright, thank you guys for watching this with me. I hope you guys learned a thing or two from this illustration. I will like and subscribe. I will catch you guys into the I will catch you guys in the next show. Good night.